Ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to be here today at the presentation of awards uh, to the undergraduates of the year. So may I thank Louise Hodgson for her invitation to present these awards and to all of you for your very kind welcome. And Firkin Fulcha Darish of Ruim. It is my practice as Uktron Ahern, President of Ireland, to speak Irish every day. When I was inaugurated a year ago as President of Ireland, I spoke about the importance of citizens of all ages making their own imaginative and practical contributions to our shared future. Today we celebrate some of the work of those citizens from here and abroad, citizens of, this, of ours and other countries, who have undertaken the task of rethinking, reimagining and reconsidering the way we live, the way our societies and institutions operate, and how we define and prioritize our values in the lives we share together. I made that statement in my inaugural address because I felt we were at the beginning of a period of great and fundamental change, which in later speeches I contrasted and compared with the great shifts that were taking place in intellectual categories, for example, at the end of the 19th century or earlier in the different versions of what has become known as the Western Enlightenment. So in China, in Gajevina, Fudan Dan, Tomi Dig Marktor, Margurt May Drivsha, in Willaharu Ulawur, it is a time that is also an opportunity to test our creativity, to draw on our talents and skills, to be resourceful as we open a new chapter, which demands new ideas, new thinking, and new concepts. It is also time to return to questioning the perceived inevitabilities by which we live, for querying the status quo and coming up with new solutions uh, to, old, to old problems. As a former university teacher, I think I sometimes asked myself the question as to subjects that were very anxious to claim as science and at the same time, for example, did not want to acknowledge the great paradigmatic shifts that had taken place in sciences such as physics and others. The late philosopher and intellectual Tony Jute wrote that the thrall in which an ideology holds a people is best measured by their inability to imagine alternatives, by failing to question received versions of our contemporary world, we fall into a habit of thinking uncritically, of assuming that's always the way it's been done. This, of course, is very like the iron cage that Max Weber foretold in the 19th century when that which was originally claimed to be rational becomes simply an irrational continuity without justification or its assumptions declared. The way it's always been done is a valid explanation for those who want to maintain the status quo or of being part of a cohort that may further acquire to stifle progress, innovation and new thought. And it does take courage a courage we note in the history of science that goes as far back and before Galileo Galilei, to refuse to slip into cultural or behavioural dimensions of thinking, to not take the easy option of blindly accepting the received wisdom, it can take great effort and imagination to reject the shortest route of thinking, the straightforward pathway that fails to take into account unexpected obstacles or to explore the gems of thought that often lie hidden down the more complicated and less well-lit side roads of the mind. Those of us interested in the history of scientific discovery are well aware of the great effort that it takes to put yourself into preparation for the wonderful gift of a serendipitous finding. It is a gift given to scholarship rather than an alternative path. It can also take audacity and strength of mind to stand up to the authoritarian 
And I have to say, often paternalistic controls that can so often hinder progress and stand in the way of creative thinking. At this distance from my work as an academic sociologist, I have to say how shocked I am at the tendency to authoritarianism in so many cultures, in so many places, in both genders and people of different ages. Scratch and you find an authoritarian. And I think of also, in reflecting on what is published now, by way of academic work very often, <coughs> Even in the relationships, in terms of between scholars, one sometimes see, if you like, the arid world that such creates. Today in Ireland, we are working uh, to close a chapter which I believe to be an aberration in our intellectual history, a chapter which has failed, which was not the best version of ourselves as a people. And we're striving now to open a new chapter based on a different version of our Irishness. We're well equipped to do that. The version of Ireland of 10 or 15 years in which we relied on speculative models of relationships between, for example, financial models and economy are not necessarily inherently or essentially Irish. We borrowed and imitated old models that had always been afraid to declare their assumptions. After all, when one thinks about it, some of the models had been contested since the 1930s and after the Great Crash. But it took the Galbraiths' father and son to stay lonely and isolated as the Glass-Steagall Act was amended with disastrous results for the world. It is a time now where Ireland has always, for example, given up one language and had an imposed state vernacular and then four of writers go on to win the Nobel Prize in that language. Equally, Irish scientists, working often in difficult conditions, Irish technologists in the contemporary period, we've always been required to give new versions of ourselves to take account of different circumstances. It's something we've been good at and will be required now to not just change our intellectual categories, although that takes courage, but our political thinking, our administrative views, our views of the public world, our institutions, and most difficult of all, to discomfort a consciousness that was built around endless consumption. So as we work to transform our society, we must accept the necessity and the power of creative thinking, as we call it in the Irish language, and croyoctagus and salviart, the creativity and imagination that is necessary for moving past assumptions which have failed us, and to see the imaginative powers and the fatherly gonchoran, as I say in Irish, the endless possibilities that come from working together from a different set of values, such as will enable us to build a sustainable social economy and a society which is profoundly ethical and inclusive. Next year, my presidency seminar, this year it is on being young and Irish, Next year, it will be about ethics in all its manifestations. Some will say this is rather like a blast from the past, but ethics may be coming back. We must also recognize that there can be no place in a truly active version of inclusive citizenship for an extreme and selfish, such an extreme and selfish individualism or an unquestioning acceptance of totalitarian ideologies as is undemocratic. So as we strive to move on from the fragmentation, alienation and disillusionment that has been visited upon so much of our global society, <coughs> societies that described themselves at the far developed end of, 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 of modernization, we all together begin the task of rethinking all aspects of our lives, the way we wish to live and interact with others, the way our society operates, the way we define what is valuable in our personal lives, and above all, what is valuable in the lives that we share together. I have used a word that seems sometimes to, 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 to uh, in a way, upset some people. I have said we need emancipatory thinkers. This is the difference in scholarship between description and dissemination. 
and the taking of a concept and its delivery and use in scholarship in a way that deepens or advances freedom. People are unafraid to question the kind of world we inhabit, the kind of shared, willing to debate the kind of shared future we wish to craft together and to seek new dynamic answers to the questions I've posed. So it is a time to aspire to a fully conscious and critical life, fully alive new critical consciousness, a time, as Raymond Williams put it, that I have so often quoted, to be the arrow and not the target. And if we are to reject ideologies, seek truth from facts that are made open and assumptions declared and produce alternative solutions and actions as we look to the future, we have to liberate our minds and live fully conscious lives where we constantly question the inevitabilities that are suggested to us. And so today, at the Undergraduate Awards, I'm happy as President of Ireland to, to join with you in celebrating original and emancipatory thinking. So I know that the 2,890 submissions that were received from 92 third-level institutions, both in Ireland and from overseas for the awards, and I'm informed that 14 countries, which is wonderful, are now engaged in this initiative and indeed submissions have been received from no less than 64 different nationalities. So as over Mishnah Dungalergo in Nahainach the Iliog, I will add this a word of you. So all of these, I think, are they're a reassuring reminder of the great wealth of innovative and imaginative talent that exists among our young people. Leaders, policy makers, scientists, artists of the future. The range of topics is so impressive, extending across 20 categories and a wide cross-section of issues and concerns. Some of these submissions pave the way for future investigative work that could lead to wonderful medical advances. For instance, that has been undertaken into the viability of running an integrative system of morphomolecular data in order that we can understand and characterise the underlying genetic pathways that drive cancer growth. Others explore the philosophical dimension of our society and show the importance of opening up our minds and using new logic to seek the truth from facts, interpret facts, as we craft our shared future. And a fine example of this was the Excellency Research Submission on the complex subject of faultless disagreement which is quite a radical concept. It challenges the concept of relativizing the truth of certain statements to individual speakers' perspectives or tastes. Others looked at specific challenges we must face as we seek to achieve a fairer, more ethical and more inclusive society. There are many forgotten people in our contemporary world, as we are reminded by the title of one submission, which looks at the problems faced by voluntary patients within the mental health system. Those forgotten people who are not protected by the statutory safeguards which oversee the rights of involuntary patients. In a few days' time, I'm speaking to the Irish College, of which I'm a patron. And there's a difference, of course, between talking about the universal scheme for the mental health of citizens and starting with the notion that a person is ill and appropriate behaviour, that statement having been made. A topic I will return to next week. These and all of the impressive submissions that are being honoured here demonstrate the capacity to imagine and realise a better world. All of them reminding us, as I've said, of the phrase of Raymond Williams, that once we have the inevitabilities are challenged, we have begun to gather our resources for a journey of hope. So I would just like to conclude, Marfakal Skler, by congratulating all those involved in the undergraduate awards. Yes, I'm very pleased to be patron of this wonderful initiative, and I know and I had the pleasure of meeting Oshin Hanran and Paddy Cosgrave as I came in, and they deserve praise, not only for setting up these awards, but also actively encouraging original ideas among our bright young academics. May I also acknowledge both Jim Barry and Anya Maria Mizzoni in their capacity as chair and vice chair and founding directors of the awards. And finally, at Tres Liam Lober Fad, I would like to congratulate all of the awardees here today and wish them every success in the future. Gokrak, Spanak, Tantakis, and Amatolia Chia. 
a future where they can offer so much as we work to achieve truly democratic citizenships, operating within just economies that people understand and with active participation in all of our civil societies. Thank you.